Ah, hello there, morning. At least morning here, whatever the time is, wherever you are. And welcome to another of these sessions where I share some of my experience, what I'm going through in my 90 day challenge and uh, try to answer some questions or you have an opportunity to make your comments about uh, your own experience. Uh, but today the theme is the, the importance, what I consider the importance of being random in language learning. And this came to me as, as sort of, maybe I'll just describe uh, what I'm doing. So first of all, this 90 day challenge for me, you know, Arabic and Persian is actually a lot of work. Uh, I'll be happy, you know what, I left that uh, open. So I can just close that. There we go. Not that there's anything particularly secret in there, but it just kind of looks messy. Um, so yeah, it's a lot of work. So half the week is in Persian, half the week is in Arabic. So I'm not progressing as quickly in the one or the other as I would like. However, it keeps things fresh, keeps me motivated. Like right now I'm into Arabic uh, and I have in fact a conversation with an Arabic tutor. And in a couple of days I'll switch back to Persian. And there are things that I'm looking forward to doing in each of those languages. So one of the things I've started doing now in both is I've gone back to my Asimil course. And I'm reading through with the book each chapter and I'm looking at all of the grammatical notes. Now, the first time through reading those grammatical explanations, it makes very little impact on me uh, because there's too much information. Everything is too new uh, to try in Arabic to understand how the verbs change uh, according to the person, according to male, female, uh, you know, plural, to, uh, male and female to male and female plural all of this stuff is simply too much information and um, but and there are other examples in in Persian but now having had enough exposure to both of those languages I go through the book uh, I'm up to lesson 45 or 50 I can't remember in each one of them I know all the words I have experienced a lot of the things that they're talking about uh, through a lot of the listening and reading that I've been doing. And so now it's, it's very reinforcing to see these explanations, to understand these explanations, to confirm some of the things you've seen, to point out some things that you may not have noticed. And so, so I began to realize that, so that was one thing. So I realized that you know, we often people say, well, I want to learn the basics first. Well, you can't learn the basics first. You kind of have to like language itself is random. When they say, you know, immersion is the best strategy. If you're in an immersion situation, you have no control over what aspect of the language is going to come at you, whether they will teach you the basics first. You certainly won't get exposed to 10 colors up front. Uh, it just comes at you in the way it comes at you, different tenses, uh, different items of vocabulary. And so I think, and I, I find that that's important to have a realization of that when we learn languages, that, that it's, it's kind of scrambled and to accept it as scrambled and to deal with it in a scrambled way, first get some words going, get used to hearing it, get used to reading it a bit, get used to struggling, it, struggling with it, read the odd grammatical explanation and forget it. But then at a later stage, it's kind of good to go back and go over some of the lessons with the explanations that you did earlier and which are a bit of a blur to you. Uh, similarly with my play playlist, you know, typically on my playlist, we're uh, at link, we're limited to 100 and they are looking at things that are going to make the playlist a little more flexible for users. But uh, typically in any, you know, course that I have, I listen to lesson one 50 times and by the time I get to lesson 30 or 40, I'm only, I've only listened 10 times. So, and I hadn't realized and Mark pointed it out to me that I can set everything to random to, 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 uh, yeah, shuffle rather shuffle. So then it becomes random. So then I have a better chance of listening an equal amount to all of these different uh, lessons. So therefore, but I can set it back to, repeat as well. I don't have to set it. To, I can keep it on shuffle for a while. But then if I want to go through the whole course from A to Z or 1 to 25, then I can set it for that as well. So there again, random is a good thing. 
Um, when I look at my approach to flashcards, um, you know, there are those who are completely committed to a sort of a spaced repetition system like Anki. Uh, I don't. I do review, uh, you know, my flashcards, the different activities, but I do it again on a random basis because if I were to commit to reviewing all of the words that I have learned in some kind of a spaced repetition system, that would eat up all the time I have available for language learning. So I simply, I'm not going to do that. If I were spending eight hours a day, you know, like when I was learning um, Chinese, where I was literally studying six, seven hours a day, I think I would have set aside an hour every day for, you know, an Anki type spaced repetition review. But when I have an hour and a half to two hours and I want to listen and I want to read, I'll throw in a little bit of random review, particularly a vocabulary, you know, right after having read something. Um, so there again, random flashcards, random listening. Again, if I'm listening on the playlist, to me, in a way, listening is the main activity. That's where I spend most of my time. If I listen to something and I don't understand it, then I can go to the playlist and I can open that lesson and I can read it and review the words again so that the listening is kind of driving me to do other things. Uh, and so randomizing it is kind of good because then I'm getting random. Like I get curious, I hear something you didn't really understand it that well. I go to my iPad, I click on the lesson, open it up and read it. So that again, randomizing is giving me random access to different bits and pieces of the language, which is what happens in an immersion situation or watching a movie. You have no control over what's going to come at you. So you can be systematic, I think, to some extent, particularly in reviewing earlier lessons and, and any lesson that you have ever done, whether it be in a book or at link, is a friend. You have that. You can go back to it and should go back to it over and over and over again. And you can go back to it in a totally random way. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, it's not as if what was covered in lesson three needs to be covered before you get to lesson five. The language isn't like that. You can do lesson five, lesson 15, lesson three, lesson eight. Uh, the, I don't find that there's necessarily any progression. It's not obvious to me, like typically in most languages, they try to teach you the present tense first, but in Arabic, and I think in Persian, I think that was also the, no, maybe not in Persian, but in Arabic, they begin with the past tense because the past tense is easier in Arabic, but there's nothing intrinsically more difficult about the past tense than the present tense. Eventually you have to learn them all. So you can learn them in any order you want. You can learn them randomly. So, so I think to have an approach which says, I'm not building, this is not like building blocks. Once I sock this into place then I can build this other stuff on top of it. I don't see it that way at all. You're catching little bits and pieces of the language, forgetting it, meeting it again. Some things click in and then you lose them again. Some other things click in so that I think uh, an attitude of, of randomness, which then keeps things fresh because you're dealing with new stuff and jumping around and just allowing the language to, to stimulate your brain and the brain will sort it out. The brain will collect all these different pieces and put them together with enough stimulus and maybe the variety makes it more stimulating for the brain. So it, it's just, I, I mentioned that because typically in language courses, they try to say you got to I do lesson one and lesson two. And if you go ahead to lesson five, the teacher tells you, don't go ahead of the class. I haven't explained that to you, says the teacher. Well, maybe the explanation will quickly be lost in any case. And that the, the student needs to be aware that that lesson two, lesson three, they got to go back there again and again on their own. And they shouldn't be uh, relying on the teacher to lead them through lessons one, two, three, four, five, in the hope that somehow they'll end up with something because it'll just collapse like a castle in the sand, you know, when the next wave washes in. So anyway, just to say that at least in my own experience, I find an attitude which, which uh, not only accepts the random nature of language learning, but embraces it and makes the language learning random in the end, I think will be more successful than one that tries to be systematic. Now, that's my experience, my view. I look forward to your views. And so with that, I'm going to have a look at uh, whatever questions and comments we have. So let me just see here. What do we got here? 
Da, 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 da. All right. How are you guys doing? There's normally a lot of nice chit chat. Yes, I was late, you know, uh, Edwin Finch. Sorry, I was a minute or two late. I was cleaning up after breakfast because typically I get up first. I made some porridge and fruit salad and stuff. And then we watched a bit of television. I watched the, uh, the aftermath of the schmuzzel in the United States. Uh, then I uh, opened my iPad and looked up my, uh, uh, you know, uh, podcasts. And so there was a tremendous podcast from uh, France 24 about Egypt and ancient Egypt and Egyptology, uh, Misriya Karima. And I was understanding 10, 15, 20% of it. So I immediately went in. And uh, in fact, I'll show you that just for the fun of it. I went in to, um, you know, I, I, I grabbed a hold. I grabbed a hold of the, uh, I grabbed a hold of the, the video file, uh, parked it on my MP3 converter to con convert it to MP3. Then I uh, put it into my Vocalmatic. I'm not sure it's still up here. Yeah, Vocalmatic. Uh, I have to go in and remove all the times, the timestamps. But once I have that, I can copy it and import it into uh, Link. Uh, then I uh, go to my, I have uh, saved my MP3 conversion of the file to the desktop. So I can import that. And I now have a lesson on Link, which I've entitled Egypt March 25. I've put it in my France Vagat course. And I'm ready to go. So there's a bunch of blue words, there's some yellow words, there's some white words, and I, I just can't wait to do it. And it's a full, I don't know, 30, 40 minutes long. So this will keep me going for a while. So between that and cleaning up and everything else, uh, I was busy and I was a couple of minutes late. So I apologize. And uh, so again, you can see how things are random. Like, so I've got this material to go through, which is difficult. And yet I'm going through my Asimil uh, lessons, which are easy, but confirming some of the things that I've noticed about, um, you know, grammar. And uh, so, yeah, there you have it. Now, let's get back. So, yes, sorry, I'm late. 200 days in a row, Link Street currently ranked number four. Very good. Greetings from Virginia. All right, Virginia. I have never been to Virginia. I've been to um, Myrtle Beach, that's North Carolina, maybe. I've been to Washington DC once. It was very nice, it was actually snowing. I renewed my links because it actually worked. Thanks, glad to hear that. Uh, I was just reading your book when notification popped up. Hi from Florida, I hope you don't think all Americans are delusional. Okay, America is delusional. Yesterday, we live in this community here, and um, so a bunch of people decided we were all gonna go out and tailgate at the local polo match here in Palm Springs. And I'm telling you, everybody chipped in, brought food. There's actually a few Canadians there as well, but you know, uh, chairs, uh, tents, canopies to sit under. It was a fabulous, fabulous day. Everybody very helpful and cooperative. We like being here, don't worry. Thanks, after you learn Chinese, you could learn. Uh, blah, 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 Japanese, John, 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 which language? What are the languages to learn if you live in the US in terms of making more money? <laughs> if you don't learn languages to make money, Okay, uh, the approach to learning languages is the following. In life, and I can talk a little bit because I'm older now, whatever success you want to achieve in life is a function of how many opportunities you're able to take advantage of. So in order to have opportunities come your way, you have to do something. If you sit on your hands and do nothing, there will be no opportunities. If you're out doing stuff, helping people, giving things to people, that's going to trigger opportunities coming your way. If you learn things, if you work somewhere or you volunteer, and if you learn a several languages, you are going to increase the number of opportunities that may come your way. And that's it. So that opportunity might come with Spanish. It might come with Chinese. It might come with Arabic. It might come with Russian. So I don't think you should try and, and again, life is a bit random too. Uh, it's not because you do step one that you will necessarily get to step two. If you do step one, it might trigger 
something that you hadn't even anticipated that will come your way. Non-language learning related book recommendations. Well, it's hard. Like I can't remember right now some of the interesting books that I've read, but I like to read about history. And so my recommendations would be along the lines of history. But I, I, I right off the bat here, trying to answer everybody's question, I can't immediately think of. Uh, I can't immediately think of books to recommend. Ah, uh, blah, blah, blah. What do you think some people just tell you to do something else because they tell you learning language is useless? Okay, I've, I've dealt with that. Learning language, uh, okay, in life, okay, uh, so I thought about when we went to the polo ground. So someone had to come up with the idea of organizing an excursion to the polo ground. Every, here in Palm Springs, everybody had to do something. Everybody was do, doing something constructive. If you do something constructive, you will be happy and you will be contributing to other people's happiness. So just do stuff. <laughs> if you want to learn a language, learn a language. That's something constructive. Just do things that are constructive and good things will happen. What's the very first thing you do when you stumble across a new word? Me personally, I look it up on, uh, you know, I, I click it, up pops a... Uh, uh, possible, you know, it could be a user hint, it could be Google Translate or whatever. If I like it, I take it. If I don't like it, I go to the dictionary. Very often in Arabic, uh, I go to context reversal. Uh, it's very good. There was another one I can't remember. Anyway, I, I added another uh, Persian dictionary as well. So I check around if I don't like the, uh, I don't like <laughs> the, um, you know, sometimes I don't like the, the, the dictionary definition that I get, so then I find a better one. Is an hour speaking online with a tutor equal in value to an hour talking with someone in person? Very good question. Uh, pluses and minuses. It depends entirely on the person or tutor you're talking to. Uh, obviously, language learning, it, it relies on sort of resonance. Like if you talk to someone that you like and where there's strong resonance, you're going to do better, you're going to retain more. If you are faced to face with someone, it's higher resonance than being online. On the other hand, online has the advantage that you get the report afterwards. If I were to say, would I rather sit down with someone for an hour or would I rather go online with someone for an hour? I'd rather sit down in person. Uh, in terms of accents, what language is the most difficult for you? Uh, I mean, there are aspects of Arabic that are quite difficult, like the awe. <laughs> I still haven't figured it out. Uh, there are things in Swedish that are difficult. There are things in French, Russia. I mean, there are sounds in different languages that are difficult. I wouldn't, I, I can't really say uh, in terms of, of generalization. Mm, hey, Steve, what would you say is your third best language other than English and French, Japanese? Definitely. Uh, followed by Mandarin, Chinese, followed by Spanish. Privet, Steve, Privet. Uh, yeah, uh, and love to go back to Russia sometime. Will. Hey, Steve, do you think it's important to sleep more every night when you're learning a language? Sleeping is good. If you don't sleep well, you have less energy, you are not as positive. Uh, so, but that's true for any activity. Hello, Steve. Have you ever seen anyone reach native like fluency and accent in Spanish? Thank you. Um, native life, like if you take. The answer is not only in Spanish, but in other languages. Like there's uh, Dashan who lives in China, apparently. And like I can't judge someone as to whether they're native or not in any language other than English. Okay, because uh, however good their accent is, if you're not a native speaker, you don't know. But I think that Luca Lampariella in Spanish sounds native to me. Uh, he would be one that comes to mind. But then his native language is Italian. He lived in Spain. So that gives him some advantages. How to start a new language when you don't know a single word. That's what Link is all about. You start with short pieces. You look up the words. You listen. You go away and listen on your playlist. You listen again. You read again. You review the words. And slowly, slowly, you get a bit of a grip on the language. You do lesson one. And even before you understand all of lesson one, you go to lesson two and lesson three and lesson four. And by the way, not in the sense that lesson one prepares you for lesson two. It's just that you get tired of lesson one and you move on to lesson two. Uh, okay, Lao Shihao, thank you. 
When you learn a new word, do you take any effort to try to remember it or do you just go with the flow and just use exposure for the word to sort of naturally hold gain some place in your memory? Yeah, I don't make any particular effort. I don't, in fact, I have no expectation that I will remember it. I'm not at all disappointed when I don't remember it the second or the third time. I'm just curious, in fact, as to how many times I will have to meet that word before it sticks. And so I just continue with the exposure. Uh, on link, I can move it from, uh, you know, a, a, a sort of category one word, which is the dark yellow, to two, to three. I'll often do that. I'll often do that just in order to help me notice the word. So even though I, you know, I've now seen it once or twice, I'll just move it to two. Even though I don't really feel confident that I have a better grasp of, of that word, I'll just move it to two anyway. I like to lighten up the color on my page. And then in time, I realize that I now know this word, and so then I move it to known. Uh, Steve, again, I commented on a random YouTube video and one of the guys in that comment said, told me to work on my weak English and this made me disappointed, nervous and hopeless. <laughs> there are, first of all, uh, based on what you've written here, your English is not weak. Uh, second of all, there are people who take pleasure in sort of, again, random, random nastiness on social media. My advice is to ignore them. I ignore them. Uh, people come on my YouTube, oh, you're boring, you're a big windbag, they, they tell me. Well, that's fine. So then, you know, that person probably won't. I mean, why does he even bother coming on my channel to tell me how bad my videos are? Go somewhere else. Don't worry about it. You, we learn languages for ourselves. We learn languages because of the tremendous enjoyment we get from, you know, realizing that we're understanding more and more of the language, uh, that we can communicate in a language that earlier we couldn't communicate in. And so therefore, you know, I wouldn't get too carried away when people tell you that you're doing well, and I wouldn't get disappointed when people tell you that your language is no good. Basically, you know how well you're doing based on how well you understand and slowly the sense that you're better able to express yourself although the progress there is sometimes a bit slow uh, what are your thoughts on trying to practice people every day well sure if you can find people to practice with every day that's great and it also depends on your ability to fit that into your schedule uh rush with max naruto just remember that that guy has problems <laughs> i agree with russian with max absolutely have you ever seen someone speak C2 Russian that isn't a native Slavic language speaker? I haven't heard that many um, non-native speakers of Russian, but I am sure, as with every language, I am sure that such people exist. Uh, I, I, in fact, if I hear people speak Russian well, and particularly if they nail the cases or the, uh, the, you know, the aspect of verbs, I'm just very, very impressed. But always I can hear the ones that I've heard that they're not native. So I, but I'm sure such people exist. I can't think of anyone off the bat. I just bought a book about learning multiple languages from scratch at the same time. What's your opinion about it? Thanks a lot, Alexander from France. Well, uh, I, in my case, I haven't done it because I started with Arabic and then having learned the Arabic, uh, the Arabic alphabet, I thought I would take advantage of that to learn Persian. So they weren't both necessarily from scratch, but my advice in all of this stuff is do it and experiment with it. Language learning is to be fun uh, and therefore, uh, you know, random and do it. And But you'll see that you may want to favor one language because you're more interested in it, or you want to maybe continue both because you have, a, it gives you a sense of variety and you look forward to spending a little time here, a little time there. You might do, as I'm doing, you know, half the week on one and half the week on the other. You may go two weeks on one and two weeks on the other. You may decide to go 80% on one and 20% on the other. Experiment with it. Nothing bad is going to happen. Uh, go around for contents can end up confusing our brain. No. No, I, I, okay. Not in my experience. Don't try to master it. One rule for me in language learning is don't think that you can master anything because you won't, uh, in my view, and in my experience. And therefore, yeah, you can deal with contents in different ways. I move on when I don't understand, 
you know, if I only understand 60, 70 percent, it's time for me to move on. If I find that content uninteresting, if I don't like the voice, I move on. Uh, I try to stay mostly in content which is not too difficult for me. But when there's no more of that stuff, no more of the sort of early intermediate material that I should be doing in Arabic, then I move into more difficult content, such as this material on Egypt that I'm looking forward to attempting. <clears throat> you think linguists can learn language faster because they know the science of languages? No, I think that, if, that linguistics has very little to do with language learning. Uh, when I come in, Steve live video, I see lots of good people. Naruto, I think so. Here in our group, we don't have too many nasty people. I haven't come across them. Do you enjoy making these live streams? I enjoy making these live streams. I enjoy the reaction. I enjoy the questions. Uh, I mean, here I am. The whole language learning thing is kind of my third career. I enjoy learning the languages. I enjoy talking to people about languages language learning, I would like more people to learn. And I'm always sort of been annoyed when I hear people say, yeah, I would like to learn a language, but I don't have the talent. You're lucky you have the talent. Okay, but I am quite committed to language learning. Okay, Ni Hao from Shenyang. How to add time material? We don't have Thai right now. So there are people who use some other language slot that they're never going to use, like Latin, and import material in some other language. It becomes a little difficult because you have to uh, find an online dictionary uh, for that. We don't support the language. Uh, also, we don't want people doing that so much because then someone who is studying Latin will find, you know, Thai, I don't know. It's, it's, Hopefully, someone will help us produce uh, the mini stories in Thai, and then we will add Thai. Uh, last session, you were looking for another kind of learning. Uh, the website, check it out. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, I like the idea of comprehension. However, I find it hard to retain vocab I have read. I can realize what it means in a sentence. I'll read it again, but hard when it appears somewhere else. Okay. Of course, we can't remember vocab. Don't expect to retain vocab. Uh, just focus on enjoying the content and understanding the words in that context. And if you don't understand them, look them up with your online dictionary or whatever. Randomly review them and you will find all of a sudden, as the example I showed with my, uh, when I shared my screen of that Egyptian that uh, uh, Fonsfad Cat podcast that I had described and I had imported as a lesson, lots of white spaces. Eventually the words do stick, but you can't deliberately learn them. Any tips for getting used to Japanese grammar? I've tried, I tend to over uh, analyze syntax and the meaning of every word and every sentence. Okay, yeah, don't try to understand everything. It's, you know, slowly, slowly the fog lifts. So when you first start out in a language, especially a, especially a language like Japanese, which is the logic of Japanese is quite different from the logic of, say, French. And so you sometimes think, like, that can't possibly be how the language works or that doesn't make sense uh, because we're using our, you know, Western language logical system to try to understand the language. And so you think you'll never get used to it. In fact, you get used to it. And I don't find that the grammatical explanations help a lot. Only when you have already gotten used to the language, do and then at that point do the grammatical explanations, which confirm what you have experienced, do they then make sense? So I learned Japanese without any kind of grammatical explanations. It's just in Japanese, they say things this way. Okay, so that gets you through the content uh, but then you can't use it, and the next time you encounter that structure, you're still confused. But with enough exposure, these things start to become natural. Do you read out loud or in your head? I think all of us, when we read in a foreign language, we read in our head, we sub-vocalize. I don't do a lot of reading out loud, but I am saying the words in my brain, for sure. 
Hello from Bahrain. Hello. Okay, Marhaba. Okay. Uh, if you don't, you know, novels are difficult. This is uh, from non paro sedentarismo. Okay, fazer quando você não consegue dominar novels. Novels, novels are difficult, very difficult. Lots of more difficult vocabulary than news articles, and it's longer. So to take on a novel, the reading of a novel is a major challenge. But once you have read a novel, it, it's a major milestone in your learning. So. Uh, you know, I would begin by reading novels like I would go for novels where I can find the audiobook and then I would import the novel into Link and I'd go through and acquire the vocabulary and I'd listen to it and I would also get the paper book and then I would read it in paper and if I do, do that for a couple of novels that then will get me ready to just go and read a novel without the help of the audio. Uh, how can I create an environment for English? Well, I don't know where you are but uh, you know, there are line language, online language exchanges. And, and I mean, it's great to talk, but actually you can do a lot just by listening and reading. I, I want to continue to stress that. Hello, I'm from Indonesia. We now have Indonesian at Link. Uh, for those of you who are interested in learning Indonesian, uh, one day I may, and at that point, do and Maman may help me. Uh, no, no, no. Is there any news on the Link t-shirts? I spoke to Mark, he's actually on, leave on holiday for two weeks. We're looking at what we can do. He has a friend who is into sort of promotional clothing items and we will get back to you. Learn two languages at the same time, what would work with the English language? Well, I mean, it, it depends what you're interested in. There's nothing, uh, you know, you can learn English and French, you can learn English and Chinese. Okay, Costa Rica, I should visit Costa Rica. My wife, her father was Chinese, her mother was Costa Rican. So we do have a connection with Costa Rica. Um, my kids have visited Costa Rica. Uh, I will let you know if I come. I'm going to the US for three months for working. Are there some tips for me to develop English? Well, I would, you know, do as much as you can before you get there. Uh, lots of listening and reading, movies, uh, you know, novels, audiobooks. Uh, because the better your level when you arrive, the better you will be able to take advantage of the three months that you are in the U.S. Okay, yeah, uh, I understand most of the books, but TV series are difficult, of course. Uh, TV series are difficult. A lot of the sort of uh, scenarios in these TV series are not very natural. The language sometimes is not very natural. It's difficult to understand understand them, you're not in the situation. If you're actually in amongst people, you're in it. The TV thing, you're not in it. I found those difficult in Japan uh, after even five years living in Japan, even though I could conduct business very well in Japanese. Do you think language teachers in school don't really care if you learn the language or not? Oh no, they care. No question. I have been to the uh, these uh, American conference for the teaching foreign languages. Uh, conventions that they have and the teachers are very enthusiastic. I just think very often the methods that they use that are typically imposed by the curriculum, by the school system, are not so effective. But most teachers very much care if you learn. Teachers are very motivated to help their students. That's been my experience. Have you heard of a ReadLang? It's a website similar. To, I've been using it for a while to improve my Russian and Portuguese. No. Have you ever met Stu J. Ray? No, greetings from Colombia. I've been reading your book, The Language That Link in French. Thank you for sharing. Thank you, greetings from El Salvador. Greetings. And just ignore you when you try to speak their native language. Uh, you know, there's no accounting for what, how people will react when you speak their native language. Uh, they're not your teacher, so they're not going to humor you. If they speak to you in the language that you're learning, good. And if they don't, then you just have to communicate with them in whatever language uh, seems to work the best. Uh, I agree. How, how does intensive reading work in our brains? How does it help to achieve fluency? Well, all right. I'm not entirely sure what intensive. There's sort of intensive reading and 
extensive reading. Uh, I tend to call intensive reading the kind of stuff that I do at Link, where I read and I look up words and I listen and I, I listen again and I read again. And that's very intensive. Whereas extensive is not to worry about words you don't know. Uh, and this is something you can do as you progress in the language. And so you're covering more material. There's more gaps, words that you're kind of leaving aside, and but you're reading more extensively. Uh, in both cases, they have the effect of providing stimulus to the brain so that the brain gradually gets used to the language. That's all I can say about how it works because I am not a neuroscientist. When reading Persian and then you suddenly come across a French word, does this make you happy? Yeah, I got a freebie, cadeau or uh, magazine or whatever, lots. But even more so when I come across Arabic words. So anytime, this is this thing about false friends. I love false friends. There's all kinds of stuff on the internet, you know, teachers fussing about false friends, friends, be careful. It doesn't necessarily mean the same thing. That may be true. But in terms of helping you remember uh, vocabulary, those words that are similar to words in other languages, even if they have a somewhat different meaning, are very helpful and always welcome. Uh, I got it right. Yes. I am stuck in, at the B2 level. Terrible plateau since one year in German. Any advice? Uh, if you're at B2, you're in the sweet spot, okay? I would love to go back to all my B2 languages and just enjoy them. Read and listen and speak when I get an opportunity and because I would then be enjoying the language. I've done all the hard work to get myself to B2. Now I'm gliding and as I continue gliding, I will slowly, slowly improve. Uh, I would also maybe if there are certain structures in the language that continue to give me trouble, I would pay special you know, attention to them. I would underline them while reading or save them as phrases if, if I'm in link to try to get at those areas where, where I know that when I speak, I kind of struggle to say those things. That's all. But in the meantime, just enjoy the language. If you arm wrestle Dashan, who will win? He will win. These live streams are awesome. I learned so much. Okay, thank you, Sophia, because I like them. Okay, how is, it, how is it going? You tell me, how can I learn a new language without feeling that I'm losing progress in languages that I already learned? I never feel that I, I mean, I could not now speak Romanian, okay? But I have done enough in Romanian or Greek that if I all of a sudden had to visit Romania or Greece, uh, I have, first of all, I have a lot of stuff material in link that I have already studied, I would go over that again. So it, it, these languages are not gone. They're somewhere in your brain. And in my case, they're somewhere in my iPad, in my link system, and I just refresh them and they come back. And very often I have found that when I go back to a language that I did before, so I'm rusty for three days, but when I come back, I am stronger than I was before and it's because we forget and we relearn and we end up knowing it better so i wouldn't worry about it does polish help you learn russian or would it be more helpful for russian to help you learn polish i mean it goes both ways uh, polish in a way is easier because it's written in the latin alphabet and i find that's always it's always easier to read in the language in the alphabet that you're most familiar with but i think either one is going to help you because of, in, in all of the Slavic languages that I have done, the fundamental grammatical issues are the same. Okay, so, I mean, the question here is, is it no matter, uh, you say it's not important to master content, you mean for those who are just learners who like languages, or is it also those who intend to work as a teacher? Okay, if you intend to work as a teacher, you want to be competent in the language. I believe that not worrying about trying to master stuff is going to get you to fluency faster. If you try to master a limited amount of content, you won't master it anyway, and you will slow down your progress. So I would say that if the goal is to be fluent in the language for whatever reason, including you know the desire to work as a teacher, then don't be too hung up about mastering stuff. However, if you're going to teach the language, 
then you do have to do what I'm now doing in my Arabic and Persian. In other words, having you don't worry about mastering the language, you charge forward, but every so often you have to go back and go over these sort of basic grammar explanations. The, the, uh, you know, the, the, the beginner book, the basic stuff. You don't do the, ba the best time to do the basics is when you're already quite advanced in the language. And then you go back and every time you do, and more than once, and every time you do that, you get a firmer and firmer grasp on the basics. But you can only start to grasp the basics after you have moved forward without worrying about the basics, if that makes sense. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah, that's right. No, I mean, not everyone's going to like my, uh, my, my videos. And those that do uh, watch and those that don't, don't. But I have no problem with B2 speakers. I've seen a person on us. Do you think learning phrases every day is a good way to sure learn language, learn phrases is good? I listen to many stories provided by AJ Hogue, but still my English hasn't improved much. I mean, one shouldn't continuously criticize one's own level or level of improvement. I I I would guess that your English probably has improved, but you can't also just stay with simple stories. You've got to get a variety of content. Because, you know, the brain requires repetition, but the brain requires novelty. So you have to stimulate the brain. So don't just stay with the same kind of content. Again, gets back to this whole random thing. Make sure you get a variety of content, open things up for the brain, keep it fresh for the brain. You think going to a country for three months will increase your level if, if you are A2? I can't answer that. That depends on so many different factors. Salamat pagi. Indonesia, okay. Uh, I don't think I'd see you here, blah, blah, blah. I didn't think I'd see you. Greek is more difficult, more intriguing. Uh, I'm an old, okay. Okay, not very, Steve. Uh, do you have any tips for learning French verbs? From text, I usually can't tell whether they are regular, irregular, or how they are formed with different persons. Okay, so if you're on link, and I refer to that because I, I think that's a particularly you know, useful, but it needn't be just link. There are dictionaries out there, conjugating dictionaries. And so if I look up a word at link, then I go to that conjugating dictionary, context reversal, for example. And you, so then I look, so I look up this verb. So the verb says, uh, you know, whatever it is, uh, je vais. So I look up, if I click on it, it'll show me that it comes from aller, to go. And it'll show me all of the different conjugations of that verb. And I just look through it very briefly. I look for, for the one that I selected and all the other conjugations, and I go back to my text. It's just, again, sort of a random exposure to that verb. And every time I come across a verb where I have any doubts, I go to that conjugating dictionary and to confirm just where it is, where it fits in, and some of the other stuff. And after a while, it's just random exposure to the language. You can be exposing yourself to the language in a context. You can expose yourself to the language in uh, these tables, and it's all gradually going to help. Okay. Uh, I think you learn a language. You need to be a fan of the loving and the reading silly, by the way. Greetings from Turkey. I'm learning nine languages. I'm wondering how can I study all those languages at the same time? Ha, ha, ha. I have no idea. That's a lot. I find that I'm very busy trying to learn two languages and fitting in all the other activities that I have. Do you turn people off if you speak too proper? No, I don't think so. What do you think an online language tutor should do? I think an online language tutor, role number one is to be very encouraging. Okay, so to, to motivate the learner. Uh, show no impatience when the learner makes the same mistake over and over again. Uh, try to stay in the target language as much as possible. Repeating things, picking up on the phrases that the learner didn't use correctly. Uh, keep the conversation going. Don't rely on the learner. Don't sort of say, well, what do you want to talk about today? The learner doesn't know. The learner's a little tense, doesn't necessarily, you know, isn't in a position to, to lead with the language. So you have to bring the language out of the learner, try and find areas that the learner is comfortable talking about. And, and so encouraging, stimulating, motivating, uh, obviously good Skype connection, good lighting. Sometimes I talk to people, it's so dark, 
uh, whatever you can do to make it a pleasant experience. And then to end up with a good list of 15 phrases that the learner struggled with and ideally record those and then send them off as a report. Steve, is reading while listening good or is reading more effective? It's all good. Uh, I find that when I'm not very strong in a language, it's very difficult for me to read as quickly as the audio. So I tend to read, which takes me longer because I'm looking at words and I'm struggling to read. And then I go away and listen. But I also occasionally will listen and read at the same time. Yeah, I mean, these are the things, this is, you know, we have to make decisions about where to spend our time. Nine languages is a lot. Uh, da, 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 da. If you, in your expert opinion, what are the easiest languages to learn? Don't know. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Steve, can you give tips on how to use listening, how to listen, and what to listen to? Well, I listen when I'm doing other things. I cannot just sit down and listen. If I sit down and listen, I lose focus. Maybe it's because I'm fidgety and impatient. So if I'm cleaning up the kitchen, if I'm exercising, if I'm in the car, that's when I listen. Because I'm listening while doing other things, I fade in and out. So, and I could be listening, say, to many stories that I've listened to before in order to focus in on certain aspects of the language that I hadn't noticed. I can only do that for so long before I completely lose focus. Uh, if I'm listening to something that's intrinsically interesting, like a novel or an audio book or, or an interview on France Bad Cat, which I don't understand yet, uh, then I'm listening for content and I'm still kind of in and out. So don't worry about it. Just listen, you fade in and out. It's just exposure. And ideally, if you don't understand it all, you go to the text and read it and save words and phrases so that you'll have a better chance to understand it the next time. Hello from Al JP. Mr. Hoffman, thank you. And it's nice to see you. Thank you as well. What is the topic today? It's the random nature of language learning. How can I improve tones while speaking in, Japan, in Chinese? Tones in Chinese, you got to learn them as phrases. It's difficult to remember the individual tones. And I, my own experience was and when I started listening to Xiangsheng, these comic dialogues in Chinese, because they exaggerate the tones, that very much helped. Greetings, over in the Estados Unidos. Your English will improve if you use more emojis. Da, da, da. Check. Practice and you will get excellent. Is it worth doing flashcards for the readings of Japanese words and letting immersion fill in the meaning? Well, I didn't do flashcards. I started Japanese already knowing the Chinese characters for Chinese, and I didn't use flashcards in Japanese. So I can't say if it's useful or not. I think. People have to try different things and see what works for them. Okay, it, learning a language with a tutor versus tandem language exchange. I have never been a big fan of tandem language exchange. Uh, I, you know, I'm selfish. I want to learn the language. I don't really want to speak English. Uh, but again, it depends on the partner, uh, just as the tutor depends on who the tutor is. If you have a very good person, uh, and uh, you have interesting things to talk about, both of you, both in your own language and the target language, uh, I'm sure it would be a very good thing to do. Let's just admit Japanese is the hardest language for native speakers of Indo-European languages. Uh, I have not found that to be the case. Uh, I know many, uh, say, English teachers who go to Japan and end up speaking Japanese very, very well. Lots of good speakers of Japanese. I don't think it's that difficult. Uh, I mean, I shouldn't say that it's not difficult, but to, to say that it's much more difficult than anything else, I don't believe that. There are issues. You've got to learn the kana, which is not a big problem. You've got to learn the kanji, which is a bigger problem. Uh, but grammatically, it has, uh, I, I don't think it's such a big deal, but that's up to each individual. Uh, I heard Stephen Crash say, if you learn 5 to 10% of a word every time you read it, does your brain learn words like that when you are listening? Uh, yeah, I don't, I'm not so confident of how much you learn about a word every time you read it or hear it. Uh, some words uh, simply click in faster. Other words, forever, you seem to unable to remember them. Uh, yeah, I, I simply don't know. I simply don't know. Should you take 
advice from a language tells you the way to learn language because they have, that's up to you. Homer in link more than reading in my native language. Thank you so much for link. You're most welcome. Can you give me tips on how to use listening? I we answered that. Any plans to learn Latin? I had it at school. It's not the top of my list. When will you have a living video at Russian with Max? Sure, we can do that. Uh, where are you from, Steve? I grew up in Montreal, but I live in Vancouver most of the time. Uh, do you think two beginners in each other's languages could learn from each other? Or I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't have a conversation with a beginner. Uh, I want to learn from a native speaker. Okay, good question. I am Japanese. I speak English and Chinese. Currently struggling to check. Most complicated, I guess. Yeah, I mean, the Slavic languages to me grammatically are much more complicated than Japanese. Uh, uh, have you ever tried to practice languages outside with a camera like Moses? No. Why not Mandarin? Any person in the world can pro pronounce any Japanese word. Mandarin is more difficult. Yeah, I mean, we can argue about which is more difficult. They're difficult in different ways. Uh, what's your favorite book in English? You know, that's so personal. I like history books. What kind of things do you not focus while listening? It's I don't control that. I'm listening and all of a sudden um, I lose focus. I get focused back again. Uh, okay, Russian with Max. W would it make sense with Russian, what you talked about? Uh, yeah, with Russian, of course, the problem is not the verbs. Well, it is the verbs of motion and the aspects of verbs, but in terms of endings, it's the nouns and the adjectives. And that's exactly what I did. I would look at the tables and I would save phrases. I would tag the phrases in links so that I could sort of have a concentrated review of them, and I still get them wrong. And I'm hoping now, I'm going to Ukraine second half of May, and particularly in Eastern Ukraine, it's in Kiev, it's mostly Russian. And I just, I'm hoping that when I'm, you know, with people and speaking Russian and I'm hearing them speak correctly, that I'm going to start picking it up. But in terms of things that you can do while reading and listening, I think the idea that you sort of get a, a bit of a, a random, but an isolated look at uh, these things that are difficult, like the cases. And it's not about explanations of cases. It's about actually developing a habit so that you produce it correctly. I think this sort of isolated, random-based, but isolated look at tables, look at phrases, is all, it contributes to you gradually getting them better. And then when you hear them in natural conversation, that further reinforces it. Uh, how good does one's French need to be to read Proust? I think Proust is 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 good, and uh, you know it's it's fairly demanding, I guess. Uh, I mean, I didn't read Proust as a beginner. Uh, one thing I can say is that Proust is quite boring to read. However, when you hear it as an audiobook, which I did, I listened to it as an audiobook. It's much better. It's it's much more pleasant to listen to as an audiobook. So <clears throat> I would go out and get. An audiobook, and uh, and then the ebook, and import the ebook into uh, into Link. Uh, because I I wanted to know what do you think? Some people won't give credit when you speak a language fluently. Yeah, I don't worry about people like that. Uh, how would you go about learning vocabulary for a vocabulary section on a standardized test you're taking in your native language? Uh, you got to read. I mean, depending on what the vocabulary is whether it's broadly based or medical or economic terms and i would do a lot of reading in that subject do you think two beginners could learn from each other no what do you look for in an online tutor i, I think i answered that sri space repetition in africa are they good to learn words thank you sir i'm sure they work srs spaced repetition systems but it's a question of how much time you want to spend doing that activity so <clears throat> in my case not much how to expand my English vocabulary from B2 to C1? Lots of reading and listening. And expand it, you've got to decide, do I want to expand it into, say, political, economic, technical, literature, and then go find material like that? And I would use audiobooks and ebooks because then you can look up words and you can hear it and you can be kind of reading the book while doing something else because you're listening to it. If a student was for a long time speaking with a native teacher, but current 
really has no longer can how long do you think this student will have till you lose a speaking skill no you don't lose the speaking skill it may get rusty <clears throat> but then if you get a new opportunity it'll come back pretty quickly ah uh, okay i'm like someone's grandpa can you native speaker in three or four languages i don't think you can become a native speaker in more than one i read out the link form that someone is translating the main source in catalan i hope so I, I i'm not up to date on that we may even have catalan i simply don't know i do a lot of listening to, uh, I, I, Yeah, I mean, Khaled, yeah, whatever you do in the language is good. It's all good. But you do have to expand your vocabulary past simple words because the people you'll be talking to eventually will know more words than you do. And you have to be able to understand them in order to have conversations. Well, to teach English without using translation, you got to repeat what people say and where they struggle and use the same words back at them and point and gesticulate. But also, when all else fails, use translation. How hard would it be to learn Polish if you know Russian? Yeah, I think any of the Slavic languages, the biggest issue for like from Russian to Polish is vocabulary because the grammar is very similar. There are some things that are different. And um, so, I mean, it's, it's a lot easier. There's no question. How to balance between learning English at intermediate level and French from the beginning? I don't know. You'd have to experiment. Do you have any suggestions about improving English writing? To write better, you have to read a lot. Read a lot. Reading improves writing. Listening improves speaking. Uh, I struggle to understand grammar. As I say, give yourself a lot of exposure to the language, you know, get familiar with it, and then read through those basic books on the language. More listening and reading, read through the basic uh, instructions again. Have you got some things to speak better? And do you think Justin Trudeau will lose? <laughs> Don't want to get into politics here. Have you got some techniques to speak better? You got to speak a lot. Hi, Steve. <laughs> yeah, uh, Elliot Lockwood. Reading and listening. It's amazing how powerful, how simple, how easy it is to do, and how effective it is. A Brazilian Portuguese speaker who speaks six languages been thinking about learning my first Asian language. I love all of them. So, which one would be easier to start with? I mean, I don't know about easier, but uh, you know, to me, Chinese is the one because you've got to get at the characters. Now, Asian languages, of course, there's the East Asian languages which are very much influenced by Chinese. And then there's Indonesian or there's Thai. So it's a matter of what you're most motivated to learn. Standardized, uh, <laughs> yes, Polish, you're Russian, you're Polish. Standardized test I'm taking, there's no subject matter. It's random vocabulary like you would find. It. Well, then you just have to read broadly. Uh, I recently found your channel started taking into its link. Is link worth it? If you're asking me, of course, I think it's worth it. That's where I learned all my languages. Other people may have different comments. When you talk about more personal aspects of language learning, what works for you, it comes back to what you've already said about content and finding what compels it. Yes. Sometimes when I read a sentence in Chinese, all of the words, but I can't seem to understand the meaning. Any tips? That's true in all languages. And you just have to, you know, there is, there are patterns to these languages. And the brain will eventually start to sort these out. And it's just a matter of more exposure and gradually it becomes more natural. Okay, Pedro Garcia, I mean, você tem que escutar e ler. Pouco a pouco se vai melhorar na língua. There's no magic. Okay, will you remember words if you write passages over and over? It's possible. I don't do, do that. So, does language learning have a positive role in strengthening our cognitive, mental, and uh, abilities? Uh, I think it does, but I have no proof of that. I'm not a cognitive scientist, but it's it's a good, positive things thing to do. Thank you, Russian with Max. Uh, we should chat sometime. 
no, 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 no. It's the same. My recommendation is in the need. I know quite a few agents. Okay. With that, I am going to leave because it's been a whole hour here. So th thank you for listening. And uh, we'll see you the next time. Bye for now.